that has nothing to lose because you don't. And when you realize that, that's when you make the decision that you're going to play your best. Because if you don't, you don't have it tomorrow. You don't get another 48 minutes. That's what we're here for. The pride, the tradition, the family. Yeah, about the guys in this room. Nothing else. 48 minutes for everybody who's here. Do you understand me? Yes, coach. Do you understand me? Yes, coach. Welcome back to CFB Nation. I'm your host, Nino Brown. I got my co-host, Boomer, a.k.a. Jared Gray. We're going to be breaking down Tulane Green Wave and the P2P. It's been a little bit. We back. It's better than ever. How we doing, my man? Man, I'm good. You know, it's always fun to cover Tulane. We got the Green Wave, man. We got, you know, our people down there, you know, Maddie and everybody going to – gonna. we're going to get critiqued either way, so we might as well show them some love. So Yeah, actually. It was uh, – we we uh we made friends uh, out – in Tulane, um, with a bunch of guys, you know, Nick Anderson, Dorian Williams, obviously our guy, he showed us a lot of love at the senior bowl. That was Tajay Spears. While he was catching love, he showed us some love when we were doing play interviews. So shout out to Tajay, you know, out there with, with my guy Willie in, in Tennessee. Hopefully they can both do big things. Um, but this one's gonna be interesting. There's um like I like to say, Boomer, there's a lot of moving pots in this in this breakdown for Tulane because a lot of production's going to be replaced. Uh, so, some of the neighbors, I like to call them the neighbors in this conference, are gone. They're bringing in some new neighbors, right? So you always got to adjust. There's always that, you know, that odd, you know, first knock at the door with the neighbors. You see how that goes, you know. But uh, let's just let's dive right into it. They went 13-2 and two last year, right? They won the AAC um, conference title. We all know what they did, you know. USC. That game was just <laughs> absolute a travesty for USC. You know what I mean? Tajay went off for two hundred and four and four touchdowns, and, and Pratt look was just hitting guys downfield. It, it looked good. Um, like I said, the AAC loses Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF, and they're really only taking on UTSA in North Texas. UTSA. Hey. I'm a t- I'm a bold prediction. Bold prediction. I'm gonna jump right to the end. Roll. Tulane versus UTSA in the AAC championship game. So they're gonna go. I'm, I will get we'll get there in a second because I got I got something lined up. Hey, the schedule just happens to fold out nicely with the prediction my man just worked in. Um, UTSA is a dangerous neighbor. Okay, we're gonna be breaking them down. Um, a little bit after this. But the guy, and here's the thing, is can Michael Pratt take the next step and put himself in a top 10 in college football quarterbacks and lead the Green Wave to a top 25 finish again, right? They, they, they made it top 25, but he brought out the year last year. Here's my thing, all right? Pratt, your typical QB build, 6'2", 205. We like that. He's got a strong arm, cerebral QB. He finished last season, uh, 63.6% completion. Uh, 215 completions out of 338 attempts. 3,000 yards, just over 3,000 yards. Yeah, right under 9 yards per attempt, so I like that. Right under 10 yards per air yards attempt, like that. I love this. 27 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. Man, channeled, you know, he got jiggy. A little, is in a Will Smith last year. 478 rush yards, 10 touchdowns. Boom. I, I, for a guy who really wasn't coming into it as, as, as you know as a dangerous dual threat QB, he was flashing. What are your thoughts on the dual threat QB ability? Hey, so I'll, let's give him some props on the four seventy eight rushing, right? Uh, I want a quick plan, you know, flag plan. I, we need to find the clip because I'm pretty positive. I said twenty five and six, yeah, or twenty seven and six, Something and I was there. like, if I, it, I'm pretty sure I was, was almost dead on. And because I remember we talking at the end of the season, so to see him, I think that I'm a little worried about the regression just because he's lost wide receiver help, lost your running back who's an all world beater. Yeah. Um, he, no linebacker wants to cover Tajay. Just ask her Savaka and yeah. the senior. <laughs> like, it, nobody wants to cover that kid, and so. But the biggest thing that they needed is Pratt to come back. He's their leader. He's their quarterback. He's he's their Joe Kane, okay? And 
and he needs to lead the locker room. He, you know, after phenomenal comeback season, one of the best comeback seasons I think we're ever going to see, you know, to where bottom barrel to cotton ball champs, division champs, right. You know, or conference champs. Yeah. I mean, just absolute monster year. Pratt is the key piece that they had to bring back. Cause he could have left. I mean, it's, I would argue this this draft class is much deeper than you know last year's draft class at quarterback, and I feel like he did enough last year. He could have got plenty of looks. He and I mean he's he's my I want to have at the Senior Bowl guy. So yeah, yeah. Listen, hey, not even go to the NFL. He could have hit the portal, and I'm pretty sure there's some SEC schools. <clears throat> Nick Saban. Uh, that, <laughs> that man wanted to give him a call. Uh, he would have put them right back into relevancy and on the map. But this is what I like to see. Okay. You said, you know, from two and 12 to 13 and two last year, 63.6 was a career high. Okay. He had 700 more yards than he had the previous season, and he had 300 more yards. That's why I was impressed by the jigginess of the Michael Pratt because 300 plus more yards from one season from QB, that's a lot. Now, Will the Green Wave turn to more of a passing offense with Tajay gone? Here's what I'm thinking is possibility, right? Because what I'm thinking, and what's going to lead up to in the next question that we talk about the next topic is, I, I, I'm going, and this is no, you know, we're not talking dirty here when I say RBBC. No, 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 those crazy terms. Uh, RBBC, running back by committee, I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that this might be the direction Tulane goes with that backfield because they don't have a guy to come in. That, is, for me, makes my eyes open. This could be a possibility for Michael Pratt to be able to air it out. He only attempted 30 plus attempts four times all season last year. Mm, I worry a little bit there. Can he handle a big bump in the workload, right? Luckily, though, for him, they returned three offensive linemen. All circles around. Sincere Haynes were at the center. You got Prince uh, Pines and Rashid Green should help uh, Pratt stay upright. Four games all year, Boomer, of 30 plus attempts. For a team, I'm feeling the buzz and what I'm getting, what I'm reading and looking at, seems like they're going to be going more of a pass offense. Is he going to be able to handle that? Yeah, I think he does. I think, you know, the build up to it last year and the leadership that he he came, I think he wants it on his shoulders. Mm -hmm. You know, he wants to be the guy. He wants to, you know, imagine he throws, you know, eight games of 30 plus more and, you know, and, and we get a 64, 65%. Even if you stay 63, you know, right where he's at, pretty close to 64. But if he gets to 65, He's going to be a top 10 quarterback in college football next year. Fact. And and the offensive line is still there. He's going to run a little bit, you know. I don't know if we're going to get 480 yards rushing out of him this year, <laughs> but um and I'm not necessarily need it, but he might need to pull some Josh Allen stuff and and have 400 yards rushing again. Right. You know, but have just a little bit more passing. You know, they're when they needed him, he was there. Yes. And I think that, you know, their wide receiver room is young, but maybe that's exactly what they need is some youth. Yeah. I, I, you know, sometimes uh, addition by subtraction is the, is the answer, right? Like um, now the 400 yards, I think was, listen, there was lanes that are open because you got a guy in the backfield that could be a magician at any time. You don't know we are going to give him a screen pass. He's going to take it for 70 down, down the line. So like you had to stay true and you're staying true and you're giving Pratt lanes. He can rip off seven, eight at a time. Now, we talked about him. Might as well go into the next question. Who's going to make up for the production and explosive for Tajay Spears this year? And I'm going yeah. to need you to explain to me, Boomer, like I'm five, because I don't see it happening. Um, you know, they, they've got some running backs came in. You know, they're obviously got Arnold Barnes, um, like who him. could be the guy, right? Like, we, yeah. we've talked about when the first was uh, – he, won't, he ain't going to shy away, but I, I think he has to do it, right? Yeah. I, I think you have to take, you know, but if you get a guy that gets hot, you know, like Barnes or your three-star, you know, guy that, that came in, do 5'9", 224 running back, that's a dude. Yeah. That's a little bowling ball. Like, I mean, yeah. you got you to weigh me by 30 pounds here, buddy. You, you, can, get, you can get after it. So, um, he, he's done it before, right? He, uh, in his senior high school, he had like 1,700 yards, 22 touchdowns. And he's like, he's pretty fast for a big dude at two twenty four. He's got. Like hey, I'm gonna tell you right now, he was at Booker T. He is a baller. 
Yeah. Booker hey. T in Oklahoma. So I, I'm gonna tell you right now that that's not that's not a school that shies away from you know what they're what they're gonna do, right. and you still can't stop the kid. Uh, yeah, I'm a I'm a fan. I think that he could, you know, let's be real. Taja wasn't you know highly recruited, but once you saw his tape, you're like, oof, right. I mean, he's, he's an NFL running back, and you know we were you, you're blown away by everything about him. But like you said, we got Arnold, who's who who could be that guy. I mean, 17, 22 rushing touchdowns in any type of college football or high school football is impressive. But then when I tell you it's top tier Oklahoma football, and you got and you have seen you know plenty of tape, me going to games, we don't mess around down here. So. um we got high school fields that are as big as colleges. So, yo, hey, you said Oklahoma football doesn't mess around. He went off for 381 and six touchdowns in one game. Like, yeah, people sometimes don't even do that a season. <laughs> yeah, that's that's balling, dude. I mean, it's it, it's a it's a fun. I'll be honest with you, kind of, you know, you brought him up and you, you know, you've kind of playing them on me. Obviously, I'm always going to root for an Oklahoma boy, and why not? Yeah. I mean, he's legit. He, I would argue he's he's about the same speed mm-hmm. as Tajay is, right? Yep. I, I don't I don't think he gets up to his top-tier speed as fast, but he's he's 20 pounds heavier. Yeah. So. He's just not dancing. He's not salsa like Tajay was. Yeah, yeah. Now, he, he, he ain't got them hips. That dude's got some Elite yeah. hit, yeah. But, Tajay does. So uh, Arnold can can run run him over and then pick up speed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm with it. The guy I really like, I think he's going to be the starting RB by committee uh, guy to start it off, just because of the experience coming over. That's Cedro Lewis, right? Transfer over from Liberty. I think he might start off the year as the lead back, right? Uh, he had 122 attempts last year for Liberty. Um, about 530 yards, eight touchdowns, right? I'm, I'm so Tajay took the role last year because he was in camp, he wasn't the number one guy, right? There was a battle, but in camp, there was a couple injuries. Tajay started out slow, hit that switch week three, like, all right, I'm all done with this injury thing, it's mine, I'm not going to deal with it no more, and just took off. Now, this gentleman was there last year, uh, Shadi Clayton Johnson, right? Wayne Johnson, I'll t- he puts on 10 more pounds. He's a linebacker. Yeah, yeah right. I, I mean, it, he's a big boy. Another guy's been with 6'1", 210. I mean, you know I don't know. He flashed a little bit, right, because he had 300 yards, but he had 106 in one game against Tulsa. Then he had 76 against SMU. But for some reason, you could put all these running backs and flash that tape. Otto Bonds is the guy that just jumps off the screen to me. He got it. He's a like I said, he he's like a mini Jerome Bettis, right? A fast guy that's wide who just can hit and just keep trucking. And and as the, the longer he's running up, right, it seems like the faster he seems to get, whether you hit him or not. I think Arnold Bonds could be that guy for Tulane. Arnold Bonds would be the perfect compliment to Pratt. You know why it comes to mind? When I really think about it. Short, stocky, big build, got some muscle to him. Samaj P. Ryan comes oh. to mind. He was a dude. You know, he's stocky. They, I mean, that dude was an uncle his, his freshman year in, you know, college. They, they called him uncle because he, I mean, he he was a grown man with a beard, right? He still got, dude, he still got the Rick Ross beard, bro. Yeah, it's it's impressive. So if you want to go straight top of my head, not super tall guy, stocky, you know, has, you know, four or five speed, you know. Yeah. Barnes could be that guy, and I, that, it could be fun to watch. I can't wait to get uh, Maddie's, you know, take on it pretty yeah, soon. So. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. Let's uh, let's go to the defensive side of the ball. We're gonna come back to the offensive side because I got a question about the wide receiver room, and you, maybe you got an answer for me. Maybe we both of us don't got an answer because there's a lot of voided voided targets going on over there, but there's a lot of voided tackles in this linebacking room, right? Two hundred. And 45 voided tackles. That's a lot to make up for Dorian Williams and Nick Anderson, at, you know, who moved on to the next level. How they make up for that production and leadership? It's not even just the 245. The leadership in the 15 and a half tackles for loss. Boomer. Like they, they 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 kept everything in front of them, right? They were vocal leaders on the field. 
But Batman and Robin for that that linebacker core. This guy's there. How it's going to be split up, I don't really know. You got Corey Platt Jr., we got Jesus Machado, and then, you know, I think this guy is going to be the dude, Darius Hodges. He's going to play the Joker, right? I don't know. They should have all the opportunity. Platt Jr. was a redshirt freshman, so he didn't see the field much at all, you know, out of, you know, the guys I just mentioned. But he's coming out of Little Rock Christian Academy, and he played both sides of the ball over there, right? He was productive. He had 20. Boom. I know this is going to, this is a dude for you. He had 24 offensive touchdowns to add on with 71 tackles, three tackles for loss, and four picks his senior year, right? Like, that's a dude. Yeah. You know he's coming and he's still doing it. I, he, athletically, you know, yeah. if he's at a bigger school. Yeah. Yeah, like you, you're hearing about this kid already. I mean, and, and Little Rock ain't small. Let's not get this tri- twisted by any means. Right. I mean, it's a, it's a big area. So they're not playing small competition. They're playing 6A, 7A schools, and he's ripping off 24 touchdowns, 71, you know, tackles in 10 games. Yeah. Come like, on, bro. Like, I'm at- well, that, that is super athletic. I, Boomer was back and forth. He's back again. We just did a little boop, boop, making sure you're paying attention right there. Um, yeah, that, that's an athletic dude for sure. Uh, now, so, like, the Joker position is somewhat like the Mike position, I'm assuming. Everybody's got a different name for that side. Yeah, we call it the Cheetah in, at Oklahoma. So so they play the boundary, right? They, they're yep. mostly responsible for the boundary and, 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 and you know, getting – you know, rushing the edge. They put a boundary in coverage, get, 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 you know, on the edge, get down and cross pressure. This guy, Hodges, 6'2", 245. He's a former three-star. He gets downhill a lot, okay? He had 16 and a half tackles for loss in 21. He had eight last year, all right? You're looking at, like, 24 tackles for loss two seasons, and now you're going to be the dude. That's not being the dude. That was playing in a, you know, film and roll here. Now he's going to be the guy. I mean, between Williams and Anderson, somebody's got to step up. Love Hodges. I, yeah. I wonder if he's, you know, kin it all to the TCU kid. Um, I, you know, who's – sorry, I'm, I'm hopping in and out again. Yeah, um, that's, that's all right. That's all right. He, he's a dude. And, I mean, I'm with you. I think Hodges could have a big year. and He could have, a, you know, big, you know, tackle for last year. I'd love to see him get back up to his 21 stats, you know, if – yeah, I mean, he, to get to get to the eighteen or sixteen, I mean, they only vacated fifteen and a half. So if he's got sixteen of them, let's go. Yeah, right. Exa- exactly. It's exactly. If it can be done once, it can be it can be done again, right? And now, opportunity's knocking at your door. The reps are going to be there. Let's see what you got, big fella. Can the secondary help them get pressure? And I say that because if they can lock down the coverage, right, which lets them get in the backfield a little quicker or have a little more time to get in the backfield, then maybe they can get things going early. The Burden transfer, um, Cammy P. I ain't saying that name because I'm going to mess it up. I'm going to call it Cammy P, right? They got Patterson. AJ Hampton. Yeah, Patterson, all right. AJ Hampton. Well, they'll bring veteran presence for secondary for the Green Wave. That that could be young outside of Jairus Monroe, all right? Uh, Cam had 74 tackles, 44 solo, six pass breakups, two and a half tackles was at Louisiana. And Hampton had 100 tackles and 21 PBUs at Northwestern. Hampton's a dude, right? And he can play all over the field. I, I'm a little, like, perplexed by this one, by the way. <laughs> Why, Northwestern let him leave? <laughs> well, is he a grad transfer? Yes. Okay, so I get that. But you're a 100-tackle guy in the Big Ten, yeah. and you go to Tulane. Bro, those are linebacker numbers. <laughs> I had a feeling I mean, this and, was gonna... it's not like we got a ton of tackles, you know, or a ton of passing in the Big Ten. It's not like we're lighting him up. Right. He might have 100 tackles again. Yeah. He might be a must grab. I mean, although I know we keep talking about, you know, Tulane guys that, mm-hmm. you know, the senior ball, but we've, we've enjoyed it. And they obviously have done really well there. And we got a list, you know, so. Jim, you know, look out for this cat. I mean, I'm I'm impressed. If you're not impressed by the hundred tackles, twenty one. I mean, I don't know. Where, you ain't watching football. So yeah, if, it, if it's a hundred tackles, look at you. Twenty one pass breakups has gotta. That's gotta draw some attention, right? Oh my gosh, bro! Those he, are those are godly numbers. Yeah, and then 
You got Jarius Monroe, 22 tackles, 16 sold. You know, he's the veteran there. Been there a year, two years. First team AAC player last year. That, that secondary should help the linebackers get comfortable, in my eyes. Who steps up? I'm going with Hodges. I know you're going with Hodges. Let's keep it rolling. I want to talk to wide receiver room. Boomer, take it away, buddy. Well, you know, you got Lawrence Keys. Um, it's just, it, is this not a football name, by the way? I mean, Lawrence Keys the third. He had yeah. 20 receptions, 300 yards anyway, two touchdowns, 10 yards per catch. You know, that's that's where we're at. We got we love this. Your guy, 100%, this got to be your guy. Jaquan Jackson, yeah. 32 receptions, 554 yards. 16.8 yards per catch. Dude's a burner. He obviously going to take a lot of pressure off of Platt. Yeah. Um, and or Pratt. And I think that he's the the guy, right? But then you got you Keith Brown from A and M. Yo. Again, another transfer from a team that he was going to be a dude. And Tulane gets him somehow. I mean, these are two massive transfers. One on the defense. One on the offense. Uh, Brown couldn't. Legit mess people up. Yeah, but I mean, he hit six receptions, 112 yards, 18 yards for catching a touchdown. Um, like you, we talked about this for He's a he's a different element. He's your burner. He's he's your guy that takes your pressure off your running backs. That your you know brand new running back core, but it really takes the pressure off of their quarterback who wants to throw the ball more. And they yeah. brought in the talent to do that. Lo I love Keith. I really do. I I think that. He didn't shine as much as he should. And then they, then you bring in the guys you got, and he loved Jaquan Jackson. So, overall, as much as I was worried about it, I, the transfer portal is the equalizer for every team. Yeah, he, he looked good in the spring game. They only scored two touchdowns in the spring game. I think it was like 14-3 uh, green-black. But he had a touchdown, and, and one of the running backs had a touchdown. Dude, wow. He had an opportunity to eat on the side of Evan Stewart this year with Connor Webb being the QB at Texas A&M, and he came down to go play with, you know, Michael Pratt. I, I love, okay, I am a big fan of Jaquan, okay. He, for me, he's my wide receiver one. But I think, and and I really truly believe, Yule Keith could probably take over wide receiver one role by like week four or five if, if Jaquan doesn't just roll out. Yeah, you got to see some chemistry there. He, you know, he's you know burning Brat Pratt's ear down. Like, listen, you and me, you and me, you and me. Yeah. And he he he's got his can't can't you know you don't transfer to sit, you know no. you transfer to, to make an impact. And he's gonna have have a chance to do that. And I'm I'm telling you, I'm excited. I I cannot wait to see this guy burn somebody. I'll tell you what, watch out. Coming out party might be Ole Miss. Yeah, yeah. That, that I think that's gonna be a shootout too. As much as I think the defense is going to be pretty good, it's going to be early, right? And it's, I believe, what is it? Uh, second week? Second game of the season, it? yeah. Second, second week of the season, they're still kind of going to be kicking the rust off a little bit. I think that could be a high-scoring game. They got dudes um, on both sides of the ball. Uh, off, both offenses got guys on, you know, outside that can, can get downfield quick. I think, yeah, I think that could be his breakout game. But don't forget about the tight end, Alex uh, Bowen, right? He had the game winning touchdown to Cotton Bowl for them. That was kind of like his coming out party. That was not, awesome. Dude. Hey, but there's nothing better than a kid coming out at, in, in a big game like that to make your quarterback comfortable knowing that he's losing weapons going into next year. Tight end is known as a security blanket for most quarterbacks. I think this kid, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying he's going to be a top 25 tight end college football, but I do believe that this kid can be a weapon and an offense that's going to be looking for identity and weapons early. And I, but here's the thing is, and one thing that you want to see as a returning tight end is all these tight ends leaving and the, the league, you know, drafting 15 tight ends, you know, bringing in a lot of your content competition is gone. I'm small, small thought here. I have been my top 10 semifinalists for the John Mackey because he's going to be the safety blanket. And I understand we got Bowens and everybody, yeah. but I think it's a perfect opportunity. Like you said, he's coming back. His weapons are gone. Like, listen, man, I'm here for you. You know, I I'm, I'm clutch. You already saw what I could do for you. Yeah. I'm, so John Mackey award semifinalist list 
Just put it, just put it down. Book it. I love it. Listen, the kid did, you know, that, that game at the Cotton Bowl was, was his way of saying, yo, I got you, homie. I'm here. Don't don't forget about me when it comes in the offseason. My last question before we run out of schedule and give a, you know, give our predictions. Can Willie Fritz piggyback off of last season's miracle run? I mean, it had to be, like you said, the biggest turnaround, 2-12 and 12 to 13-2. and two. And if I had Maddie on here, she would be pounding the table to this question with an absolute yes. But does the AAC run through you? Listen, I... I'm a firm believer, and I will say this in, in all of sports, until you beat the champion, they're the champion. So, you, you, sure, you have you have a massive target on your back. Right. But your biggest competition from the division was Central Florida, who it has been your, like, y'all are robbed. Nemesis. They're gone. Yeah. yeah. They're gone, right? Yeah. I mean, I... I'm just here for it. I think that I'm 100% with it. I think it rolls through Tulane until somebody comes in and knocks them off. Mm -hmm. They're the team to beat. And we're going to get right to our, you know, win or loss. But I'm kind of in this weird aspect. I think it's theirs to lose. Yeah, I, I Even so, with too. what they've lost. And they lost a ton. Yeah, they did. But they did well. They did well in the recruiting. They did well in 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 um, the portal. Um, I don't know um, uh, that Hill Junior, the linebacker that just rec got in the recruiting that we love, right? He's a four star linebacker. That's the highest recruited player they've ever got. So like last year's success is already paying dividends coming into this year. And, yeah, and, huge and, and pick up on it. They pick piggyback off that and, and and get another double digit win and you know back to back AAC championship for the. The recruits are going to just keep coming, all right? They, they just got the offensive lineman that we posted on CFP Nation um, earlier uh, this week. Mercer, he, he's, he just committed three-star O-lineman. So, like, they, they got kids coming in, and the program is only climbing. Hey, let's run... And let's be real, Louisiana ain't, ain't too bad to be at, bro. I mean. No, no, no. That's no. a good place to be. Uh, it, it, it gets – hey, and I'll tell you what. It's very apparent that the Saints organization is looking – Okay, they're paying close attention to these teams in Louisiana that got talent that are popping and Tulane's popping. Let's talk about the schedule real quick, break it down. I already put my predictions on the side. There was one game I got a big question mark about. You kind of alluded to it a little bit before, but we're going to break it down. Uh, week one, South Alabama at home. What do you got? I got a dub. I got a dub, too. I think it's an easy uh, – well, I'd say it's an easy one. South Alabama's not been easy to beat right? Um, but because they got them at home. All right, this is week two at home, Ole Miss. As much as I would love to throw up the dub here, I got I got to give them the L. Listen, because it's going to be a shootout, and you know Lane Train has to win that game. Like yeah. has to win that game. That's the factor for me. Yeah, and it it's. I'll tell you what. If they don't come in all cylinders bumping, and your running back isn't getting after it, Pratt's going to scare them in the end. Don't don't let them stick around. No, no, do not. Yeah, I'm with you 100. percent The home field gonna, is there. That they'd be they'd be rocking. Yeah, you but Yolman does not mess around. No, you better let Judkins come out quick. Get get a hundred in the first half, two tutties, so Dot can get in a groove, and you can keep pumping the downfield. Obviously, you got Franklin over there and Trey Harris on the outside. Those guys are dogs. I get it. Um, and you got two big tight ends at Ole Miss in 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 K to transfer from Memphis and Trick, but. If Tulane can keep it within like 10, even 14, going down like to mid third quarter or a half, oh, watch out. Here's my biggest question. If Tulane jumps out to a 10 nothing lead, do they win it? All right. If that defense clicks, okay, if they somehow before the season starts in this summer camps and in these summer practices, they, they find their identity, right? And they start clicking it and they're on all cylinders and they can run up to a 10 point lead. I don't know if Josh can screw at 30 carries, right? They're going to have to rely on Dart. And we've seen that movie multiple times. Yeah. Right? We don't know what that QB room is going to be like. Is Spencer Sanders healthy? Could Biff, a.k.a. Walker Howard, be the guy? If Dart's not the dude, I don't know. But 
yeah, ten nothing. There might be a change in the game plan for Lane Train if that. Yeah, it's it I, again. I, I'm with you. I think it's that's one of your one losses, uh, and it's going to be a close one. All right. Next week after that, you're away. You're on the road. Southern Miss, Miss Southern Miss. I know Frank Gore Jr. is a dude. Swiss Army knife. He he. I don't think he can outdo Michael Pratt, and, and whatever he's going to do, I think Michael Pratt will get them over the hump. Give me a dub. I'm with you 100. percent All right, Nickel State. That's a dub by about 35. Agreed. UAB is probably going to be a closer game than people think because I think Trent Dilf is brewing something over there. I love his swagger. I Listen, you know, I agree with Jay Crane when he says, give me a W first, win some games before you're out there yapping. I'm cool with that, Jake. I agree with you there. But I I, I like Dilf for saying, stay out of my my guy's DMs, man. Like, and I, I got a platform that other people don't have, okay, because I've been doing this, 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 you know, being a talking head for a long time. I will put you on blast. I have no problem. I'm with that. I'm cool. I don't know what you got brewing right now. Can uh, supplant Tulane? I think you might be able to hang with them for a quarter and a half, right? But I think in the end, Willie Fritz and what the Green Wave got. Let's I, again, I think they thought they lost their best weapon, you know, as well in their running back. Right. Um, I, I I love Trent Dilfer. I've always been a fan. Love the Elite Eleven. What he what he did for them. Um, but I'm with you. I have Tulane win this game as well. All right, this next game, it could be a look-ahead game. This could be one of those games. I got as a dub at Memphis. For some reason, Memphis seems to be that little, like, annoying little kid in the block that always, like, when you go to play basketball, yeah, he might be picked last or he might be, you know, in the middle of the pack, but he's, like, he never gives up. Even when you're tired, you know, and you're backing him down on the body, this kid's still whacking at you, hitting your elbows. Memphis is, like, I feel like that's the team. Like, you, you literally have to drag them out and beat them to oblivion for them to, like, just quit on you. So even if they're out by like two, three scores, they're coming late in the game and they're going to still try to, you know, play hard and score. So they, And they have some athletes, like legit yeah. burners. You know, we talked about Memphis not too long ago. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're a tough team. That they, they have a rock solid schedule too. Uh, that's the, the one thing it could be a look ahead for, like you said, for Tulane. The problem is, is Memphis has such a tough schedule building up to that game? Yeah, um, <clears throat> that it could change. I mean, because they again, they got some. They got the no name teams, but they got Arkansas State, Navy, Missouri, Boise State, and then Tulane. Is Boise got on the road? Three games in a row that they're. I don't think they win. Is Boise Missouri, Boise State, and Navy. Is Boise on the road though? Uh. If it's it's at Memphis. Okay. All right. It's at Simmons Bank. So so they have back to back games, but they are playing Missouri at um at St. Louis. So I, yeah, I, I think like I said, I got a dub for Tulane. I just Memphis can be that team and just oh, it, it, it could be a shootout. It hundred yeah. percent could be a shootout. Then you got homecoming at Ullman against North Texas. I'm sorry, North Texas. I know the mean green is your first time in this new conference. It's gonna be a very bad experience at Ullman at homecoming. Sorry, hundred percent. It's gonna be absolute. It's gonna be a blowout. No, blowout don't yeah. mess the homecoming, baby. Yeah, it, it's a dub, right? Then you got Rice on the road in Houston. You know, McCaffrey on the outside is a dude in wide receiver position, Luke McCaffrey, but he ain't enough. That I don't think that team's got enough firepower. Give me Tulane for the dub. Great. This game, I got him losing. Okay, on the road in Greenville, East Carolina has been building something for a couple of years now. Right, we seen it last year. The running back, the wide receiver, Charles Johnson Jr., the running back, uh, Mitchell. They, they did their thing, right? They made it on to the next level. They they brought in guys to replace them. They've had guys in the pocket to replace them. The Pirates are no joke. They don't get enough respect. I'm going East Carolina at home. Tulane's taking the L. I got a buddy, you know, that went to East Carolina. They have one of the coolest entrances. In football, you know the purple smoke. Love it. Yeah. It's 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 one of my top like top fifteen of all time. L- love their entrance. Um, however, comma I still have the Green Wave winning this game uh, and pulling the upset for me. So okay, all right. So this is the one we disagree on. Uh, at home against Tulsa, that's a dub. You know, I don't see, know- I I'm I'm a little bit different about this one too because I think it's going to be a lot closer than we think. Um, Tulsa is one of those teams that plays really good away. They, they don't play great at home. 
Yeah. I mean, they gave Ohio State all they wanted. So Tulsa, for some reason, just like, you know what? Let's play the hike and shows up at away games. I don't get it. I don't know why, but they they have been one of those teams that is very tough to beat. All right, so that's a, you're going to go to L here for Tulane? So the reason why, and the only reason, is because I feel like they could be looking – this is their look-ahead game for me because I worry about the UTSA game. Well, they still got Florida Atlantic after that. They got, they got Florida Atlantic. They smoke Florida Atlantic, bro. On the road. That's a dub, right? I have, tol- I have Tulsa losing, but I just still want to say it's going to be a close game. All right. So you, at this point, one, two, three, four, five, six – Seven, eight, nine. You got them nine and one. Um, I got them eight and two. I, 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 I think the East Carolina game could go either way. I just feel on the road, East Carolina did not get enough respect. They're at home. They play really freaking good at home. So I got them at at, at eight and two. You got them at, at nine one. You said before we even spoke a lick about what we thought in this this whole program about Tulane. You had already said, "Give me Tulane." The newcomer UTSA for the AAC championship. Well, they got to play before that happens. So we would get a little preview if that was the case. Um, it's in human. Hence why I say the championship, AAC championship runs through human. Because I think you're right. I think these are the two teams that are going to come down to it in the end. And we're going to get that preview to close out the season for the AAC. This game is going to be get your popcorn ready. Okay, because by this time, Pratt's going to have everything figured out. He's going to have his weapons, who's his one, who's his two, who's his go-to guys, right? Frank Harris. These are the two best quarterbacks in the in, in the conference. Yeah. I, I, Frank Harris has been a Devy guy for the past four years. He's back on his fifth year. Um, it don't matter who he's got out there for receivers. They all eat. He eats. And he's got McCown pushing him now, too. He ain't yeah. even had that. Yeah. So – it, it's going to be uh, very, very interesting, that game. That's going to be one of those – you could see over 100 in that game combined. You know what I mean? Like, this could be – leave the defenses at home. We're going to put on a show. I want to see – what time is that game? Is that an 8.30 game? It just has to, mean, be, has to be determined November 25th. Yeah, it, Friday. they're going to flex it. You got to flex that game. That's, that's going to be like an 8 o'clock stop, 100%. That, we got to flex it. Yeah, that's prime yeah. time right there. But All right, so we'll go – who wins that game? So here's the thing is I, I I think it's impossible to beat a team twice. Right? And normally I would say that, right? It's very tough to beat a team twice. I have UTSA coming in and winning that game and then losing in the championship to Tulane. You know, I stayed at this game on the schedule. And before – I had even realized that UTSA was coming in to the AC. Okay. I had asked you why it was going back a month and a half, and we asked what teams you want to do. I said Tulane, right? And I said, Do you want to do Liberty or UTSA? That that was the those are the teams that I wanted to do. And you said UTSA because the quarterback alone has a story, makes it interesting. Cool. Then I saw that they transferred in, but all the guys transferred out. And then I saw that this was the game to close out Tulane's schedule, and I'm like, whoa. This is, hey, whoever did the scheduling, this right here, kudos. Yes, A plus. This is how you do. This is how a team that's bubbled, a team that's you know gonna put the AC back on the map and maybe possibly a top you know twenty five team, with a team that just lights the world on fire every game that they play. It's must see TV to close it out right right around the holidays. Give me, I want more of that. And because, listen, you may not be familiar with Michael Pratt, right? You might not be familiar with the Green Wave. You, you're you definitely probably, if you're not a sicko like us, you're definitely not familiar with Frank Harris and, and the Corian Clock, right? And, 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 and Ling on on the defensive side. You ain't familiar with those guys. But that's going to give you a chance to be familiar because they are going to be on primetime TV and they are going to light the screen up. Give me yep. your PSA as well for the W. Frank Harris wants to go out. He came back for 50th for a reason. He's going to want to go out and be. There's a good chance he could probably go out and be one of those top 20 all-time collegiate QBs. Like, what he's done, his numbers and stuff are just dumb, both with his yeah. arms and his leg. Agreed. Uh, but then you're gonna, all you're doing with that game 
is just sparking a fire under Michael Pratt in the Tulane Green Wave. They 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 would probably blow doors in the championship. It w- I don't even think it would be the same competition if they lost that game at home and then went to the championship game. Oh, I, I, I I feel this. I have this feeling from last year. They're going to lose. Yep. To UTSA and then and then beat the brakes off in the next week. Yep. I'm I'm so. with you. I'm with you. So give me. I say. So it would be nine and four, right? For me, for you, it would be uh, was it nine and four overall? I got two, two, lo- three losses. So I'd be nine and three overall. You would be um, ten and two. Okay, that's. Listen, I have not going right back to twelve and two. I, I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it. Okay, I think the, I, I'm guaranteeing double digits. That's I'm with the double digits. Hey, listen, if they can, the East Carolina game is a winnable game. Okay, I just I got bad juju. It's a tough one. Do not, yeah, yeah. let's not get it twisted. You go down it's there, tough yeah, bad <laughs> juju. If they could somehow win the Ole Miss game, ooh, bro, watch out because you're going New Year's. Oh, yeah, yo, that's what I'm saying. You're going from that 20 to 25 bracket that they're probably going to be in, right? Can, can you say Florida jump from last year? Right, Florida beat Utah, wasn't in the top twenty-five. And then they were ranked thirteen or whatever it may be. Right, bro, Tulane, Tulane beats Ole Miss, SEC caliber team. Right, SEC in the lane train. You're getting dudes, fours and five stars. Probably the number one running back in the country. Right, but that's what everybody's saying. Quinton Junkins going to come back for another year, which is crazy that he's he's already as good as he is. Right, but well, you you you. you they beat Ole Miss week two. You're probably looking at top 15 in the AP poll. I'm with you. I can't wait. This is going to be an absolute phenomenal year for Tulane. And you're going to get weekly updates from us, I promise you. So, Yeah, absolutely. This was a good one. Um, stay tuned because we got another one coming up real, real soon. Boomer, as always, take us away. Hey, until next time, let's go, let's go, let's go.